is this little cub going to come bundling out of? What I found interesting is that the other day when we followed her back to a spot where she had stashed the cub, it did take the cub quite a while to respond to her call. And I mean, even though you guys probably can't hear those calls very clearly, I can hear the call very clearly from where we're positioned. And we're about, I'd say, 35 yards away from her at the moment. And their hearing is so much better than ours. So that cub, in theory, should be able to hear, I'm guessing, these calls from at least 100 yards away. We've got some very, very good news, everyone, so you can take a deep breath and a sigh of relief. We came across a set of female leopard tracks, and with a little bit of investigation, we found a tiny little pair of baby leopard tracks following it. So in all likelihood, it is Tundi and her cub, and it means the cub is still alive. Woohoo! So now we need to try and work out where they are. It's quite a tricky area that they've moved through. Um, their tracks came towards a small pan behind us where they probably took a drink. And then they kind of headed back in the, in the direction that they came from. So we're just kind of checking around very carefully to work out where they've gone after having a drink. And quite interestingly, we're quite far away from where we had her yesterday at that kill, I'd say probably a mile away, and it seems like Tundi thought, let's just get out of this area, there's too many hyena, too many lions moving around, and she decided to get out of that dangerous area and move somewhere else. So she's sitting here waiting patiently at the carcass, and it's paid off, not because Tundi and Cub has arrived, but, well, because Tinio is on the scene, and we know that the Birminghams also are very opportunistic and show up in the most random of places, so massive surprise, and maybe that's why Tundi and Cub got out of here, is they heard these boys coming, knew they weren't far away, and now they've just decided they're going to try to get out. But this male knows something is here. He's come in, he's walked straight in this direction, you can see he's kind of sniffing around, and I wouldn't be surprised if he climbs this tree. It's a small enough tree for him to go in, and maybe we'll get the most epic sighting of a male lion climbing the tree. And we heard squirrel's alarm calling earlier, and we thought maybe it was Tundi and Cub on their way back, but evidently it's this male, because you can, there we go, you see he spotted the carcass in the tree now, look. You can see he's got his nose up. Tinio, have you found yourself a meal, boy? Yep, there we go. Nose is in the air. He's most certainly smelt this. He knows that there is something here. And you can see he's just stopping, just double checking what's going on. He knows that there is definitely a food item. The smell of rotten waterbuck and dike is like ringing the dinner bell. two carcasses. There's a diker carcass and a water buck and they've been left there by a leopard. There was a leopard female and her cub here yesterday and she's probably gone off for water and this male lion opportunistically has come across this and he might climb up the tree. So a lot of people don't believe that lions can climb but this male lion might just show just how well they can do it. Here we go. Look he's going to go up. How cool is this? He's gonna go. Oh. It's not as graceful as <laughs> he's a bit hesitant because well climbing a tree is not the easiest but he will get up there eventually so let's see there he goes and look at the power in that that is a massive 500 pound cat that has just climbed the marula tree and is up in there how cool is this
how cool is this? Tenny was about to go up to go get the dike in. So he's just working out how to do it. He's getting himself into position. And then hopefully he's going to jump up once again. It looks like he's going to do it. I don't know if he will.